This episode is sponsored by Honey Badger. In addition to Honey Badger's great error monitoring service, they also have an uptime monitoring for web developers. And Honey Badger has recently shipped an update that allows for public status pages that can help communicate outages to your customers. In addition to your uptime monitoring, Honey Badger now monitors your SSL certificates. And Honey Badger now has actions which will allow you to do bulk updates to all your errors, or you can set defaults for incoming errors. Stimulus 3.2 was recently released, and it introduced a new feature called the Outlets API. The pull request has a lot of documentation on what this is, as well as the official documentation. So in this episode, we're going to have a look at what the Outlets API is and how to use it. And in a nutshell, it is essentially just like these stimulus targets, but instead of the context of the stimulus controller you're working in, you can actually target a different stimulus controller. And I have had some real world applications that we'll look at where this would have been useful. And we'll also just go through a very simple example just so we can see how it's going to work. So for the simple example, I have two stimulus controllers in this application. One of the stimulus controllers has an alert function, which will just do a JavaScript alert. The second stimulus controller has a clicked function that will get triggered whenever we click this button. And these two stimulus controllers are completely different and they're not related to each other. However, I am able to call this alert function from the other stimulus controller by clicking on this button on this other stimulus controller. And so we can see that that works. And I think this example is in its most simple form and so it's going to be a lot easier to understand. So to start off, I have a fresh Rails 7 application. It does have stimulus rails. And if we look at the package JSON, we are using the latest version of stimulus. This is using ES build, but the same thing should work if you're using import maps or Webpacker. So to start off, I'm going to generate two different stimulus controllers. So I'll call bin rails generate stimulus. And then the first one we're going to call alert. This is where we'll have an alert function and that alert function will just trigger a JavaScript alert. We're also going to have some other kind of stimulus controller. I'm just going to call it something. And so with both of those controllers created, it did automatically run the manifest update. So we should be able to start using these controllers right away. In the alert stimulus controller, it's going to be very simple. We'll just have an alert function. It'll take in a message. And with that message, we'll just call a JavaScript alert and we'll just pass in the message. And that's all this stimulus controller is going to do. So we can go ahead and add this to our view and I'll just pick our root path, which is the welcome index, where we'll have a div with the data controller alert and then we'll close out this div. So it's not going to have anything else or do anything else. It's just going to have that alert function. And this seems like a pretty simple use case, but think of it like this. If you had some kind of toast library or something else that you're wanting to use throughout your application, including stimulus controllers, and it's a bit hard to interact with if you are calling it from within a different stimulus controller. And this is where the outlets is going to come in, where you can then pass in or trigger functions from another stimulus controller from the one that you're currently working in. And so for our other stimulus controller, we'll have a div with the data controller and I named that controller something. So we'll just type that in there. And within the contents of this stimulus controller, I'm just going to have a button tag and it'll say click me. And it's going to have a data dash action, which is going to go to our stimulus controller something. And let's make it go to a clicked function. And so that's all we're going to do in here for now. And then in this stimulus controller called something, we're going to need a clicked function. And so now this is where I want to trigger the alert function from the alert controller. And this is where the outlets is going to come into play. So at the top of the something controller, I'm going to have a static outlets and I'm going to call it alert. And that's going to be very important that we get this name correct. It wasn't very clear in the documentation, but with the outlets, this name needs to reference another stimulus controller. So once we have a static outlets with the alert here, we can come back into the index 
And in the same element that we added the stimulus controller something, we also need to add the outlet. So we have a data and then the name of this stimulus controller, which is something. We then need to specify the outlet. And this outlet is the alert because in the stimulus something controller, we had the outlets alert, which is the reference to the name of a different stimulus controller. So because the other stimulus controller was named alert, that's why we have to use that alert name here. We can then call the dash outlet, and then we can set it equal to something. And we need some kind of reference because this is going to work for multiple items. So you could have a class here that you want to reference or an ID element. So in this particular case, I'm just going to call a message ID. That means that on this stimulus controller, if we had many of them, we would still need one of them to have an ID is equal to message. So I'll go ahead and delete these for now, just to keep it very simple. So now that we have the view connected with the outlets, then on the clicked function of the something stimulus controller, we can call this dot alert outlet. And now we can interact with that stimulus controller. We can call the alert function on there, and then we need to pass in some kind of message. And we're just gonna call something clicked. And that's all we have to do. We can start up our Rails application and we can test this out. So I'll refresh the page. We now have the click me, which then triggers the other stimulus controllers function. We're passing in the message and it works. And there's also a few different options. There is the has and then the name of our outlet. In this case, it is the alert outlet. It is camel cased. So we could do a check to see if this outlet exists. Otherwise, we will get an error in our stimulus controller. So if we wanted to add that check, we could check if this has alert outlet. And if it does, then we can run something, in this case, triggering the alert. And this also supports multiple items. So if we are targeting another stimulus controller that had many outlets, so like this, where maybe we didn't have IDs, but we had classes, and then the selector was a dot message for the class message, then we could do the check if it has the alert outlets, and then we could call this dot alert outlets. We can loop through each one of these, and by looping through each one of these, it's going to trigger the alert multiple times. However, in this case, there isn't a plural for the has alert outlets. You could just check has alert outlet, or just assume that the alert outlets is going to be an empty array so nothing would get triggered. But we can test this out, and we would expect to see, let's just do it three times. So we should expect to see three different alert messages. So we can come back, refresh our page. We'll hit click me. We see the first message. We see the second one. And then we see the third one. And so that all works. And then back in episode 337, I had an issue where I needed to communicate with another stimulus controller. So I had the chat controller and it has this function scroll to bottom. And essentially this meant that whenever someone started typing a message, we wanted to scroll to the bottom so they can always see the latest messages. And so when a new message came broadcasted in, the issue that we had is that we wanted to do some kind of check to make sure that the user wasn't scrolling up, reading some of the older messages. So we just had some kind of percentage to see if they were within like 85% from the bottom. So that means like very close to the bottom then it would automatically do the scroll down. But the way I had to do that scroll down was a little bit dirty. So I did a query selector for that message feed class. And for that message feed class, which is that chat controller, I had this line in here, where on this element, I'm calling this identifier. So this identifier is the chat controller, and I'm setting it equal to this, which is the whole stimulus controller. And it was just a dirty workaround to get it working. But from there, on the messages controller, when the message comes in, we're going to get that message feed, which is that chat controller. We can then call on that chat element, the chat function, which is just what we had set the stimulus controller to, and then we could call the scroll to bottom. So that was just a dirty way to do this. And so let's have a quick look at how we would re-implement this. And before we do anything, we do need to make sure that we are on at least Stimulus 3.2, which right now I'm on 3.0.1. So I'm going to call the yarn upgrade interactive. 
and there's quite a few updates. The most important one is updating the stimulus, but I'll go ahead and update everything. And I'm also going to run a bundle update to update all the gems. And so that should get everything up to date. So now I should be on the latest stimulus. And the most important thing that we need to add here is the static outlets. And we need to reference the stimulus controller chat because that is where we have that scroll to bottom function. So now we have this part. Let's go ahead and look in the views to see where we need to update it. And so in the message partial, where we are basically displaying out a new message whenever it gets broadcasted, we're not doing anything with the persisted one. So when you first come to the page, all the ones that get loaded are going to load normally. We need to worry about the ones that have that chat message stimulus controller. So here we can then call the data dash and then the name of this stimulus controller, which is the chat message. And then we need to specify the outlet, which is the chat. And then we can call outlet and the selector that we're going to use. I'm just going to use the exact same message selector that we already have, which is the message underscore feed. And I'll clean this up a bit just so you can see it all on one screen. And so now that we have our chat message, chat outlet pointing to the message feed, we should now be able to interact with it. So instead of calling our chat element dot chat, we can call this dot chat outlet and then scroll to bottom. But then we have an issue here because we're calling on the element for this chat element. And for this chat element, we were doing things like a scroll top and also the scroll height. And so we're not wanting to interact with the stimulus controller here, like we are scrolling to bottom, but instead we want to actually interact with the element. So what we can do is we can call this dot chat outlet, and then we can call element on here. And now we have the exact same functionality as we had before, which means that we can now come into our chat controller. And now we don't have to expose the stimulus controller anymore. And so now we can test this out. And so on this application, whenever we type in a new message, typically what would happen is that this scroll bar would then start scrolling up and you won't see that new message. But when we post the message, we see that it scrolls down for us because it triggered that scroll to bottom function. And so the outlets API, it's not a new concept. It's something that we had workarounds for, but they always felt a bit dirty. And now we have an official path of how to approach this and it does work. The error messages that you would get are a little bit confusing. So for example, if we come back to our very simple example, and instead of alert, if we called our outlet something like message, and in the outlets, that's what we referenced. So something like this, this you would think should work because we're being consistent with our outlets and what we are referencing is still to a stimulus controller. And I'm gonna get rid of this little safety net with the conditional check just so we will get an error. So if we come back and refresh, I do have the console pulled up. We'll hit the click me and then you see that we got our error, that missing outlet element message for something controller. And that's not really clear to me, at least my brain didn't click, that it meant that it was looking for a message stimulus controller that it could not find. So just be aware of that, that if you see this kind of error message, then make sure that you actually have a stimulus controller called message on the view. So if we change this back to the alert, and in the view, if we also match that stimulus controller name alert, then when we refresh the page and click the click me button, we then get our something clicked alert. And so I think that the new outlets API is really cool. And there are definitely some use cases that you're going to be able to use that will just make life a little bit nicer. So definitely come and read through the documentation because it does have some additional things like callbacks. Whenever an outlet is connected or disconnected, that could be helpful. And just one final note, if it wasn't clear already, is that you are not able to reference non-controller elements. We already have normal vanilla JavaScript to do that. There's no need to use the outlets API for that. Well, that's all for this episode. Thanks for watching. For more videos, check out driftandruby.com.